Prologue in an old tea room. On the afternoon that, though we didn't yet know it, this book was about to be born, a storm was battering the narrow streets of Dion, in the heart of Kyoto, home of the last remaining geishas, among other mysteries. We found refuse in a dashitsu, a tea house which was empty because of the downpour. Sitting at a low table beside the window, we noticed that the torrent of water rushing down the narrow street was sweeping with it sakura petals from blossoming cherry trees. Spring had sprung and summer was on its way, and soon nothing would be left of those white petals that inspired suspicion in the Japanese. An elderly woman in a kimono asked us what we would like and what we chose the most special variety of tea on the menu. A diokuro from Ureshino, a place in the south of Japan where the best tea in the world is said to be grown. As we waited for the steaming teapot and the cups to arrive, we shared our impressions of Japan's former capital. We were amazed that there were 2,000 temples in the hills surrounding the city, whose population is smaller than that of Philadelphia. Then we listened in silence to the rain pounding the cobblestones. When the old women returned with a tray, the tea's fragrant aroma aroused us from that brief and pleasant torpor. We lifted our cups to see the bright green infusion before savoring the first sip. We tasted both bitter and sweet. At that very moment, a young woman riding a bicycle while holding an umbrella passed by the old tea house and smiled shyly at us before disappearing into a narrow street. It was then that we is looked up and discovered the wooden plaque on a dark brown pillar. It bore this inscription. We set about deciphering those characters pronounced Ishigo Ishi, while the damp wind swayed a small bell hanging from the eaves of the tea house, making it a ring. The meaning of Ishigo Ishi is something like this. What we are experiencing right now will never happen again, and therefore we must value each moment like a beautiful treasure. This message perfectly describes what we experienced that rainy afternoon in Kyoto's old town. We began to talk of other unique, unrepeatable moments like that one, to which perhaps we hadn't paid enough attention because we were too concerned with the past, the future, or the distractions of the present. A student walking through the rain, carrying a backpack and fiddling with his cell phone, provided a clear example of the letter and reminded us of a quote by Henry David Thoreau, quote, as if you could kill time without enduring eternity, unquote. That spring afternoon, in a sudden flash of inspiration, we understood something that gave us food for thought in the months to come. In our age of complete distraction and our culture of instant gratification, when we often fail to listen and engage only superficially with our surroundings, each person contains a key that can open the door to attention, harmony with others, and love for life. And that key is called Ishigo Ishi. In the pages that follow, we'll share a unique and transformative experience discovering how to make it and every instant the best moments of our lives. Hector Garcia and Francis Milaris Ishigo Ishi The Japanese characters that make up this book's central concept don't have an exact equivalent in English. But let's look at two interpretations that will help us to understand them. Ishigo Ishi can be translated as once a meeting and also as in this moment an opportunity. 
what this means to tell us is that each meeting, everything we experience, is a unique treasure that will never repeat it in the same way again. If so, we let it slip away without enjoying it, the moment will be lost forever. The Gates of Shambhala A Tibetan legend illustrates this concept very clearly. The story goes that a hunter was pursuing a deer across the frozen peaks of the Himalayas when he came upon an enormous mountain split in two, allowing him to see what was on the other side. Beside the opening in the mountain, an old man with a long beard beckoned to the startled hunter to come closer and see. The hunter obeyed and peered into the vertical crack that was just wide enough for one man to pass through. What he saw left him breathless. On the other side of the opening was a fertile garden, bathed in sunlight and seeming to go on forever. Children played happily among trees laden with fruit, and animals fro frolicked freely in a world filled with beauty, serenity, and abundance. Do you like what you see? The old man asked when he saw the hunter's amazement. Of course I like it. This must be paradise. Indeed it is, and you have found it. Why don't you come in? Here you can live happily ever after. Overflowing with joy, the hunter answered, I will, but first I want to go find my brothers and friends. I will come back with them soon. As you wish, but remember, the gates of Shambhala open only once in a lifetime. The old man warned him, frowning slightly. I won't be long, said the hunter before running off. Excited by what he had just seen, he retraced the path he had taken crossing valleys, rivers, and hills until he reached his village where he told his brothers and three children friends of his discovery. The group set out at a brisk pace, guided by the hunter, and before the sun dipped below the horizon, the man is to reach the high mountain that gave access to Shambhala. But the mountain pass had closed, never to open again. The man who had discovered that miraculous world would keep hunting for the rest of this life. Now or never. The first part of the term Ishigo Ishi is used in Buddhist scripture to refer to the time that passes from the moment we are born until we die. As we have just seen in the Tibetan legend, the opportunity or encounter with life is what is offered to you now. If you don't seize the moment, it will be lost forever. As the well-known saying goes, you only live once. Its unique, unrepeatable moment is an open gate to Shambhala, and there will never be a second chance to walk through it. This is something we all know as human beings, but easily forget when we allow ourselves to get caught up in our everyday worries and obligations. Becoming aware of Ishigo Ishi helps us take our foot off the gas and remember that each morning we spend in the world, every moment we spend with our children and with our loved ones is infinitely valuable and deserves our full attention. This is the case first and foremost because we don't know when life will end. Each day could be our last. No one can be sure when they go to sleep that they will open their eyes again in the morning. There is a monastery in Spain where it is said that whenever the monks run into each other in the passes, in the passageway, they say to each other, Brother, remember that one day you are going to die. This custom places them in a permanent now, which far from causing them sadness or worry inspires them to enjoy every moment of their lives. As Marcus Aurelius writes in his meditations, the drama of existence is not death, but never having begun to live. To live rather. Ishigo Ishi is a clear invitation to not or never, since though we may manage to live many years, 
Every mating has a unique essence and will never be repeated. Perhaps we'll run into the same play people in the same place again, but we will be older, our situation and our humor will be distinct. We'll be carrying the weight of other priorities and other experiences. And the universe is in a constant state of flux and so are we. That's why nothing will ever happen again in the same way.